Get ready to find the keys to living the life you always wanted to live. Reverend Steve James and his special guest of top spiritual men and women will share powerful keys to living the life that Jesus Christ came to make available. Alrighty, well God bless you all in the wonderful name of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And this morning I want to get into the subject of fasting. I want to look at that a little bit because it is in God's Word. Jesus Christ talks about it. It's in the Old Testament. It's in the epistles. I mean, fasting is something that is in God's Word. So I want to go to Mark chapter 9, verse 29, so you could follow along with me. And uh, when they were teaching, they shared that the word fasting is was not in the Greek text. But the truth of it is, it's in most of the Greek text, but it's not in all of them. So it's not in all the Greek text. But it's in the Aramaic. So I don't think you can just uh, get rid of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't. There's a, there's a couple reasons that you can't. Jesus his disciples asked him privately, why could not we not cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind cometh forth but by nothing but prayer and fasting. Jesus Christ had to answer them. He couldn't just say, well, this kind comes forth by prayer. You know what I mean? I guess he could, but that word prayer is the word pasuki, meaning a heartfelt desire to get something done, to help, to re I really want to. That's what that word means. And fasting means a devotion to God, like spending extra time with God, or studying more by arranging your day and time to get into God's word more, or by going to or listening to more Bible teachings, by going to a camp, so that you can develop yourself more in the things of God. All of those things are part of fasting. I just would like to take a little time and look at God's Word and see what God's Word says about fasting. But as a little bit of background, we got to keep in mind on how the Scripture interprets itself. It, it interprets itself in the verse, in the context, and where it's been used before. And one of the things you got to keep in mind is, does it contradict other verses in the Bible on the same subject? Does it contradict anything? One of the things that I care about more than what scholars have worked in God's Word is what Jesus Christ says. I care more about what Jesus Christ says than anybody else. So. With that little bit of background, let's look at fasting, okay? And it's all through the Bible, but this is some great verses and sections to learn a little bit about fasting. We'll go to Daniel, Ezekiel, Daniel chapter 10. And this one I think will be interesting in light of some of the prayers we had earlier today. In chapter 10, we're going to start in verse 2. It says, in those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. See, what happens is he gets a, a vision and he doesn't understand the vision. So he asks God, what's the vision? Tell me what the vision is to do this and to be part of his getting this vision. He's going to fast and he's going to fast for three whole weeks. Mm -hmm. That's what it's talking about. He's going to fast for three whole weeks because he wants to know the vision that the Lord had gave him. And if you read the book of Daniel, the vision is a lot of what people talk about the future times. Hmm. But he wants to know the answer from the Lord. Verse 3, I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth. Neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks 
or fulfilled. Well, what this is saying, he ate no pleasant bread. Mm. Probably no sweet bread. Doesn't say he didn't eat bread. No. So, so what you learn here is fasting is what you make it, what you, what you decide to do. Neither came flesh nor wine. He says no alcohol and no, no meat. Neither did I anoint myself. He didn't wash himself up until the whole three weeks were, yeah, exactly, were fulfilled. So that's what he did in his fast. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hildilka, when I lifted up my eyes and looked, behold, a certain man clothed in linen, mm. whose loins was girded with the gold of Euphas. His body also was like the Pyrrhal and his face as the appearance of lightning, and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet in the color of polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. And Daniel alone saw the vision, for the men that were with him saw not the vision, but a great Waking fell upon them so that they fled to hide themselves. <laughs> Therefore I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in, strength in me, for my comeliness was turned in me unto corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet, yet heard I a voice of this words, and when... I heard the voice of this words when I was in a deep sleep on my face and my face towards the ground. And behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. He was laying flat on the ground. The hand touched him and put him on the palms of his hands on his knees. You know what that looks like. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. What's going on here is encouragement. Mm -hmm. O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee am I now sent. And when he had spoken his word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. He says, The first day that you started fasting and praying, I heard it, and God sent me to do it, to give you the words. And I have come forth thy words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief of the princes, came to help me. I remained there with the king of Persia. So, on his way... Some spiritual thing happened, but the prince, spiritual being, the word prince means spiritual being of the kingdom of Persia, withstood me one and twenty days. And lo, but good thing this guy, Michael, one of the chief princes, spiritual being, one of the archangels, Michael, came to help me. And I remained there with the king of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the wisdom is for many days. And he goes on to give him the answer to his prayer that he fasted for. Now, did he have to fast for 21 days? Not really, because the... the this, this 
angel was on his way to give it to him, but he had to stop because of a spiritual battle. So you know what? This tells me something else. There's spiritual battles going on. It reminds me of Ephesians. It says, stand there for we, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But God has really made it available for us to get involved by speaking in tongues. We don't know everything that's going on in the spiritual kingdom, but we know something's going on. We don't know where it's going on. We don't know anything. And what we hear on the news is just what they can see with their five senses. But what we do know, we know. And but what we can do is pray and speak in tongues. And so I just find this very exciting to understand that God has made it available for, for us to get involved in the spiritual battles. We can decide to get up in the morning and speak in tongues. And we know from God's Word, we don't know where it goes, but we just know that it goes to helping the saints somewhere in the world. Pretty neat. But when we do see something like this on the news, we can still start speaking in tongues. Pray with our understanding. It's pretty cool. So that's a an added lesson to this fasting. I got one more in the Old Testament that I want to show you. And that's in Isaiah. And this one is interesting. This is a like a teaching of right and wrong fasting. It is. It, it's the showing of the right way to fast and the wrong way to fast. In verse 1 it says, Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek me daily, they delight to know my ways, as a nation that did righteousness, and forsook not the ordinances of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of of justice they make the light in reproach unto God therefore we fasted they say thou seest not therefore have we afflicted our souls and thou takest no knowledge behold in the day of your fast ye find pleasure and exact all your labors see what this is saying the fast that you do, you do it for your pleasure. And you exact all your labor. You do everything you want to do. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate. To smite with the fist of wickedness ye shall not fast as ye do this day to make your voice be heard on high. They're going, look at us, we're fasting. Is it such a fast that I have chosen, question mark, a day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down thy head as a bulrush and to spread sackcloth and ashes unto him? Wilt thou call this a fast, an acceptable day to, to the Lord? In other words, just to uh, afflict yourselves? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? Question mark. And now it's going to tell us the fast that God wants. To loose the band of wickedness. Isn't that why we're to fast? Mm. To undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry, that thou wouldst bring the poor that are cast out into thy house? When thou seest the naked, that thou coverest him, and that thou hidest not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning. You know how in the summer, <laughs> for, for sure, when the sun first comes into the room, it brightens that room right up, wakes you up before you want to get up. <laughs> That's what it did to me this morning. 
It's a bright sun. That's what it's talking about. That's what the fast is for. And thy health shall spring up speedily. The reason to fast is that health will spring up in its own dear. No, speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I. We hear about it all the time. People say things like, Well, God's not real. I've cried to God, he didn't hear me. Well, did they do it with the, the wrong fasting or the right fasting? Did they do it to look good for themselves? My Bible says that God will deliver us out of all our tribulation all our problems. One of the ways you know if you're fasting or you're living right is you see God work in your life. You can't say, well, you know, here I am getting afflicted and hurt and beat up and I'm praying to God and it's not happening. You can't say that. You're doing some. you might be doing it like the wrong fast here hmm. to make yourselves look good. You see what I'm saying? A fast for God is taking time to really worship God. To take time and take maybe put some things off so you have more time for God. That's what it's for. When you do it right, God will say, Here am I. If thou takest away from the midst of thee thy yoke and put forth the finger and speak vanity. If thou drawest out thy soul of the hungry and satisfies the afflicted soul, then shall, shall thy light rise in obscurity. You'll see understanding in, in obscurity and thy darkness shall be as the noonday. You're going to see pretty good in the noonday. You're going to have good understanding in the new day. And the Lord shall guide thee continually and satisfy thy soul in drought and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Wow. This looks like a fast is a good thing. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shall rise up the foundations of many generations, and thou shall be called the repairer of the breach, and the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure, on my holy day. In other words, see that's the wrong way. They were just doing what they wanted to do on that Sabbath day. Right? And call the Sabbath day light the holy of the Lord honorable and shall honor him not doing thine own ways nor finding thine own pleasure nor speaking thine own words. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. There are wrong fast, which we'll see. Now I'd like to look at what Jesus Christ says about fasting. Matthew chapter 6. In verse 16. Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily, I say unto you, they have their fast. See, our fast is a fast of doing what we can to get closer to God. It's not to show ourselves as, look at us how badly we're starving for God. Look how I afflict myself for God. You get your own reward doing that. 
Moreover, okay, in verse 17, but thou, when thou fastest, anoint thy head, clean up, you know, and wash thy face, that thou may appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. When you have an opportunity and a problem, and you go to God with humility and prayer and fasting, these two words go together, by the way. You're asking God for help, and you're letting God know, and you're acting like you want to get the information. You want to get the help. So you do what that takes. And that might be saying, hey, for a while I am going to not pleasure myself with good food and alcohol, and I'm going to ask God on a continuous basis throughout my day to get the answer that I need. And then God will hear your prayer and you'll get the answer that you need. That's what God's Word says. It's a good thing. Look at uh, Luke chapter 18. This is what Jesus thinks about fasting. We're going to go to verse 10. Two men went up into a temple to pray, and one of them a Pharisee, the other a publican. And the Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican is. I fast twice a week. I tithe of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much his eyes unto heaven, but smote his, upon his breast, saying, Lord, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled him himself shall be exalted. See, Jesus didn't say in, in fasting is a waste of time. No. He didn't say that. Hmm. He didn't say, well, don't tithe anymore. No. He says... Humble yourself. That's the answer. Humble yourself to God. That's what Jesus wanted from him, to humble himself before God. And in Matthew chapter 4, verse 2, and we all know this record, Jesus Christ fasted 40 days. So Jesus must have thought it was something good. It says, and when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward a hunger. Is that what it says? Yeah. That's what it means. Does it say here that he did not eat for 40 days and 40 nights? It doesn't say that. He fasted. Mm. He chose his fast. But I was, I bet it was to neglect some things that he would really like to do but he wanted to spend that time with God, devoted to God, God teaching him, showing him what he needed to do. It was probably a, a wonderful time for him to learn and grow with God before he started his earthly ministry. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, what did he think about fasting? That's my question. <laughs> It's even in the church epistles. Look at uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. We're going to start in verse 3. And what this is, this is Paul in written form doing a marriage council situation. A marriage council. And he says here in verse 3, Let the husband render unto the wife due belovedness, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. See, that word means good feeling. It means good feeling. The husband is to give good feelings to the wife, and likewise the wife to the husband. The wife has not power over her, her body, but the husband, and likewise also the husband 
hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Then it says, Default ye not one another, except it be with consent for a time. In other words, this is what you, how you're supposed to live with your spouse. Right. Supposed to give them good feeling, right? But if you don't for a while, you do it with consent. In other words, you both agree. And for a time. And why would you do that? That ye may give yourself to what? Fasting, Fasting and prayer. You, you have decided as a couple that you, this is what we're going to do to see God work in our lives. We're going to lay this aside for a little while while we get into fasting and prayer. So we do that. Now what does that mean? It could mean going to a weekend in the Word and you know, you, we're just going to get into the Word. It could mean you, you're going to go and just work the Word for a weekend just at home by yourselves. You're just going to pray because we got something that we need to get straightened out with God and find out what God wants us to do. That's what it means. Prayer, fasting, and prayer. And come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. In other words, you're not playing around. It's my own interpretation. And then Paul goes on to say, but I speak this by permission and not by commandment. This isn't really a commandment of, the God, of God, but it's common sense advice. But what do they think about fasting? It was something that might need to happen sometimes. We get up early in the morning and, and, and spend time prayer, praying to God and asking God for help for things. And we might put off something that we might really like to do to hear from God, to get the answer and deliverance that we need. And you can see that's what fasting is. It's something that's in God's Word that is worth doing and needs to be done. Now let's go back to Mark chapter 9. In verse 28 it says, And when he was come unto the, the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, This kind, this kind, this tough kind, can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Fasting is not in all the translations, but it's in most of them. It's also in the Aramaic. So I don't see any reason to throw that word out. When you look at, is there any contradiction from well-known scripture to scripture that's not so well-known? No, this doesn't contradict any of God's word. I don't just think you can throw it out. It doesn't contradict any of God's word. I think it means what it says and it says what it means. And even if it doesn't, it doesn't contradict any of God's Word. And what we know about studying and learning and asking God for things and what God wants, I think it's a good thing. We want to break loose the captives. We want to bring healing and deliverance to others. And if it doesn't work the first time, we want to get better at it the second time and learn and grow. So that's why I don't throw it out because it's not in some translations. All right, well, dear God, thanks for being our God, for loving us, taking care of us, God. And God, that we can go to you in prayer and fasting, God, giving up what we might really like to do at times to draw closer to you. So I just thank you for that in the name of your wonderful son, Jesus Christ. Amen. The episode is complete, so head over to stevejanes.com for show notes. While there, sign up for our newsletter, grab the freebies, and check out all that Reverend Steve Janes has available. Steve has plenty to give, audio and video teachings, articles, blogs, and biblical study books, 
all there to help you continue to grow in God's grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All keys to help you live the life you've always wanted to live.